Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is continue on a series where we've used the Elegoo Starter Kit to do a, a build and code project. And for this project, what we're going to do is use the components inside to control a microserver motor using a rotary encoder. And we're going to uh, kind of up the ante on the programming a little bit. And what we're going to do is use the rotary encoder has a built-in momentary switch. If you remember in the last video, we had a momentary switch on our breadboard and we would use it when we would click it, then we could do something else. Well, we're going to do that with our rotary encoder and servo project in that what we're going to do is when you press the rotary encoder, then the power or the control to the rotary portion of the encoder switch will actually operate the motor. So that's a, a long-winded way of saying what I've said succinctly on the website, uh, on the blog post that is, is associated with this video, which you'll find in the link below. I highly encourage you, before you dive into this project, if you're going to do it yourself, to review all the resources I have on my blog post that will help you understand what we're trying to do today i do have my instructions the uh the build information is here that is on the website as well and i have my code so remember this is a build and code project which means uh, i will live well not live but recorded uh, and uh, probably with very few edits go ahead and build code this and then operate it so you get to see all of the mistakes that i make along the way if there are any there will be trust me and what you can do though, because it is a long build, and uh, my students who are watching this, you're gonna be doing this yourself. You may wanna watch, and if you run into hiccups along the way, you can kind of use that scrubber down below to scrub forward to the specific area where you're having problems, and I may have some tips and tricks for you, especially in the building and the programming phase of this. Remember too that you can uh, fast forward and listen to this in double time, one and a half time, if that helps as well. And uh, first of all, I have to give big shout outs and a thank you to this website right here. This is the um, website for last minute engineers. And I really appreciated the care and uh, um, really detailed information that they shared about these rotary encoders that come with these kits. A lot of great information. It is a recommended read. You'll see here it talks about how a rotary encoder works, how um, the Arduino knows whether you're turning the rotary encoder clockwise or counterclockwise. That's kind of important for you to understand, especially if you are into electronics, you'll understand this signal or this wave kind of shows how we're in phase and out of phase to determine direction. Uh, again, some additional information down here, the pinouts, it'll tell you what all those pins mean. And I really appreciated that as I learned myself about, I understood how to actually, you know, connect it, but I wasn't entirely sure I understand what these represented. So we'll talk about that as we go. That was very helpful. And then just some great coding examples. And I will admit that uh, I started with their code, but because of the requirements that I'm using for this project, it was, um, uh, there were some variations to that. So it did very much quickly become some code I found online to being very specific to the project I'm working on. And with Arduinos, that's typically the case. You'll find some code that does close to what you're looking for, and then you'll refine it. The other little hiccup, or I wouldn't say a hiccup, it's actually a, a unique thing that we're doing in this video, is I want you to understand how to use functions within Arduino programming. I see a lot of Arduino programming that is just just long lines and of code and functions can make troubleshooting and the function or programming of a, a large project so much easier. So we are going to introduce functions as a feature of this. For those of you that may have programmed years ago, back in the 80s and 8-bit computing and basic, think of functions as subroutines. So you're gonna jump here, you're gonna do something, and then it's gonna to return to your main code. That's what we're talking about today when we talk about functions. As we program, uh, you'll see what I mean by functions. And the beauty of functions is how clean it makes your main loop code. And you will see that as we get into programming in our multi-function mode. So you can see which way over here that uh, you'll be able to follow along as I code and we'll be able to uh, share some of those features with you. Now you will hear me click. Uh, those clicks are me kind of changing the camera around. Uh, so just ignore that. Now you really gonna hear me click when I code, but let's go ahead and look at the items we need for our build. So I've got my workbench camera here 
We have all of our components. All of these are listed in my blog post, so you will find those. You're going to need some wires. You're going to need the rotary encoder out of your kit. You're going to need the breadboard. Uh, I've just set a few aside here to get us started. You'll need the servo motor. You'll need a resistor for your LED so that we don't harm that. You'll need your, uh, this is the Arduino Mega, uh, and this is the Elegoo brand. This will also work with a regular Arduino Uno if you're using that, or a non-Mega, which a non-Mega is about this size, about that size. This will even work on a, a small, tiny Arduino. So if you have one of those, you can do that as well. It will work with anything. I highly recommend that you have a pair of needle nose pliers. Of course, you'll need your cable to upload it. I do have an expansion uh, USB here, so we'll be able to plug right into that without going into the computer. I'll set that aside for now. And then uh, you need something to squash out bugs. This is that thing that I will be using. So right here, we'll be squashing out bugs with our little pew pew blaster. So that'll be fun. And then I highly recommend you have some writing utensil and some paper. You are probably gonna need to make notes along the way. I've done this a couple of times. I don't think I'm going to need it. So we will put the cap back on it and put that up for now, but you never know, we may need that. All right, we're ready to start building. So what I'm going to do, again, this is on the blog post. You can find this, you can download it. I also include the fritzing file. So if you have fritzing on a computer, you can download it and you can modify this however you need. So I'm going to use this as a guide and we are going to, first of all, get started. What I've decided to do is kind of start with, I think it's going to be easier if we start with the motor and connect it, then we're going to do the encoder. Now this is, this is tricky. When we get to that, I'll tell you why it's tricky, but it's not really represented well in the fritzing um, as far as the layout. Okay. So hopefully we can get this right and build. So I will build, I will say that as I'm building, I will be talking a lot. Um, and I may fast forward through some of this build as I edit, and uh, if, if I find that things are not really that valuable for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is you will notice this rotary motor. So uh, I guess I should take a second just to explain a rotary. Um, a, um, I'm sorry, not a rotary, a servo, how a servo works. The servo, basically this piece right here will move 180 degrees. So you have to remember, this is not a 360 degree device. This moves about 180 degrees. And it's great for using rotational movement to push something in a lateral way. So if I wanted to push my finger and this turned, it would push my finger away, right? So that's one application. There are many, but that just kind of keep that in mind. So about 180 degrees is all it turns. We'll be looking at that in our code. Uh, it will go, it'll rotate clockwise and then counterclockwise. And there is a home location and you'll see this will actually kind of home itself when we first apply power. The connector on this though is a female connector and you'll see that that's not going to connect well with our breadboard. So what I've done is grabbed a couple of short leads and I'm going to match the color. So here's red to red. I'm going to plug that one in there and it should go all the way in. We're going to take the orange and we're going to connect to orange. Now, for whatever reason, they have used this. It's not really black. It's a really dark brown, but that is your ground. So I'm going to clean that up for me. And as you know, we've been using ground. We've been using black for ground. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. So now by adding those three leads, now we have a male to female connection that we can do on that. So the first thing we're going to do, if you remember our breadboard, the this runner right here, and there is another one up here, right there, you'll see a negative and a positive, negative and positive. So eventually we're going to connect our positive lead from our Arduino here. We're going to connect a ground to here. So we'll just go ahead and make our connections uh, as, as we say, or as we state on our drawing. So we're going to look here and it looks like we want the control to be on pin nine. The control for this will be the orange lead. So let's go ahead and do that one first. I'm going to plug that one into pin nine. And now it's just a feature of plugging in power for this one. And we are going to use, doesn't matter, just as long as I get the right ones, we use positive here. I do need to leave myself a little room for the um, rotary encoder. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this, oh, looks like this one has not been plugged in yet. And if you've had a breadboard and they've nothing's been plugged into those ports, sometimes that can be difficult. Okay, so believe it or not, that is connected. The servo is ready to go, so we'll set that aside. And we're just gonna put that up here for now. Let me go ahead and move this so you can see what we have. 
So we have that. The next feature that we want to plug in is I'm, I'm going to go ahead, um, because this is so difficult, I'm gonna go ahead and get my circuit for my LED ready, ready to go. This is pretty easy. We've done this in previous videos, so that should not be a problem for you. And remember, the longer side, the longer pin on the LED is the positive. You do have to put this in the right order uh, in, in series. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, what am I using here? We're going to use there. So let's bring this up here. We'll plug this in right here. And that fits very nicely right there. Now remember, we probably could run this LED directly from the power from here. Uh, but what we're going to do is we are going to insert a resistor so that we don't blow our LED. I have uh, kind of cut this one down to size. When you get them, they may have long leads. As a matter of fact, in the last video, I had the leads on there up here. I went ahead and cut it and uh, so it would fit a little bit better. And remember that we want it on the positive side. And if you remember, the positive side was, I'll tell you what, let me use my pen here as a pointer. Remember that this was the positive side that we plugged in. This and this pin right here, these two pins, and I can't zoom in very well, so hopefully you can see that. These are in series, so I'm going to take this here, and I'm going to put it over here on the other end. Now, pushing these in can get a little difficult. This is where a good set of needle nose pliers comes into play. So what I can do is just kind of take this right here and push down. That worked really well, and do the same here. And that worked well. So now I'm going to just take my fingers lightly and push those in. Now because I've cut it, see how flush that is to the board? That looks really nice. So we've got that circuit there. Uh, the next thing we need to do is connect. This is our negative, if you remember, so that's going to go to ground. So we take a short uh, black wire just to kind of keep us all in sync here with what we're doing. And we're going to connect from here to ground, which is here. So that one's connected. So now uh, we need to connect our, our um, positive power. And really positive power isn't going here because if we just did that and applied power, that would turn on. So what we're doing is we are connecting from here back to the control or an IO port on the Arduino. And for this one, we are going to use, I think it's pin 11. That's typically what I use. It is, it's pin 11. And pin 11 is right here, so we're going to plug that in right there. So now, if we tell the Arduino to write power to pin 11, it will send power along here to the positive direction through the resistor protecting that LED, illuminate the LED, and then we're back to ground. So we've completed our circuit. Now, the ground isn't complete because we've not completed or connected this post line or this ground line back to here. We will do that in just a minute. So we have our motor connected and we have our LED connected. The next thing that we need to do is we need to connect our rotary encoder. Now this one gets a little tricky, but it's really cool because the breadboard actually will accept and host these five pins really nicely. I mean, it's Gee, it's almost as if it were planned for it to be that way, which I'm sure it was. So what we're going to do is, let me make sure I look closely. We're going to move it right around here. We're moving it down the breadboard a little bit so we have some space between all these items. Now you'll notice it's not going to actually plug in like that. It's going to plug in like this. That's where it gets a little tricky because you need to leave space either in front or behind it to plug in your wires connecting it here. I tried both ways. We have to remember that eventually we are going to have to operate this switch. And if there's wires all in the way, it's, it's hard to work with. So I tried it from the front, I didn't like that. And so I've decided to do it from the back. So what I'm going to do is plug it in here, but move it up one or two so that I can connect the pins in the back. So I am going to do right about here. Now again, what you're gonna notice is that's gonna fit in there pretty nicely. You have to be very careful, especially with a new breadboard. You don't wanna break your pins, but if you push ever so slightly and rock it back and forth, you'll notice it fits in there perfect. And now I can kinda of get in there and I can turn it. So that is connected. Uh, now our, the uh, encoder is on the breadboard and remember it turns and there's a switch. Remember that? 
And uh, so we'll take a look at that in a minute. Now we're going to wire it up. Before we do that, let me show you a, a little bit of information about these. So the pins, this is another one that I happen to have. The pins are CLK, DT, SW, plus, and ground. Now you can probably figure out what the plus and ground are. You probably already know that those are going to connect here and here. So that's pretty easy. But what in the devil is CLK, DT, and SW? So we'll talk about it more in the code, but CLK is basically clock, okay? It's clock. I want you to think of it, uh, CLK is clock. So the clock was, if you remember, there was a sine wave that we had uh, on that original website. So the clock is kind of that, that sine wave. The DT is really uh, the same as the clock, but it, what it's, think of DT as determining the direction, okay? So that's gonna give us the value so that the Arduino will know if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. The SW, my guess is you can figure this out, that is the switch, that's this little click in there. So remembering that, using the website that I had earlier as a guide, if I get the right screen here, uh, it was easy to figure out what those things meant, right? So let's go back to our board now and wire it in and see how it goes. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put this back in a little area. And uh, I've chosen uh, some colors here to help me keep everything straight. And so what I'm going to do now is, the first thing I'm gonna do is connect the power to the um, uh, to the encoder switch because you do have to have a positive and negative voltage to that. So what I'm going to do is, and you know what? I did not go far enough. I can tell already. See, what I was hoping to do is plug in behind. I need to move this up one more. So already a mistake. Here we go. Let's plug that one out and pull that out of there. And let's move that up one more and seat that in very carefully into these pins. Okay, there we go. Now, you can see behind here, I can get to those pins and wired up. So, and uh, as you know, um, what we have is ground is that first one. So let's go ahead and plug that in. I'm gonna save these longer ones later. Let's use these right here. And uh, we'll get this one and I'm gonna plug in behind here. Now, remember it's not here, it's actually over right here, and you can use these little solder joints as guides so we know that that one is negative. And I'm just going to bring that and get that one out of the way. And I'm going to put that over here on the negative rail. Right there, you can see that. The next one we do will be the positive. Uh, so I'm going to bring that one. Again, that's our positive value there. So I'm going to bring that one and put, I'm going to go ahead and plug that one in here. Now, the next part is a little tricky because now what we've got to do is get the connections from here over to our I.O. ports on our Arduino here. All right, so I've got three colors to kind of help me out. Um, I, have, uh, I have a green one, and I'm not sure why this one is shorter. I thought I had those pretty close to the same color, but uh, evidently I messed that up. Um, got a short one, but I, it's worked before, so we'll see how it works. So this is where it gets tricky. So I'm gonna look at this and make sure. What we're gonna do is we are gonna use I.O. pins uh, two, three, and four. And we're going to go two, three, and, oops, if you can see that, two, three, and four. So let's start with three, which is the middle one, which is, if we look on here, that is our, our uh, switch. So we're looking at wiring in our switch. So we will use, let's use the blue for the switch. So I'll come in behind here plug that one in and I'm going to plug that into pin make sure I get this right pin four two three and four is what we're using okay so four so now the guide will be easier because then I just know I use three and two so the next one we'll do is behind that one. Oh, I can see uh oh mistake okay right there I've got to Bring that up one more. I went behind it. And that's where it gets tricky. you got to really be careful. Make sure. So now I'm going to take this next one and put it in here. And then plug that one into pin three. 
Actually, this was going to work okay because two is a little bit closer. And then finally, I'm going to plug into this one right here. And then we will plug that into pin two. Now, again, it's, it's a little tricky because it makes it hard to get to our encoder. So what I'm going to do is just kind of separate these a little bit so that I can get into the encoder and we can turn that. Now, I've got something that's going to help with that a little bit later. All right. Now, if we've done everything properly, and I think we have, hopefully we won't have to use this again, although we probably will on our code. Um, but what we can do now is connect power to our breadboard from the Arduino. So we're going to need the 5 volt power source because this does take a 5 volt power source. This will not operate under the 3 volt power and an Arduino does include both 3 volt, 3 volt and 5 volt. So let's go ahead and plug this into the 5 volts which is here and look closely and you'll see uh, there's a little thing here that says power and right next to it there is 3 volts and 5 volts. One of these days I'm going to get a zoom camera. I'm going to have to do that. Uh, but for now, I think you can kind of figure that out. And then where does this go? That's right. This goes right to the positive rail. Remember, once I apply power, every one of these rails are positive. So make sure that everything that's plugged in is red uh, and make sure that you have done everything properly. And so we'll plug that one in. And then finally, we need a ground. There are several grounds on this board um, and I think what I've chosen is just use the closest one you could choose a ground off of this rail but there is one here and I'm going to look a little bit closer it is right there it's your third pin in and then we're going to plug that in there all right there we have it we should have everything wired so the the build part is done we will eventually get to the programming part We'll put everything to the side. And uh, before we get started, though, one of the things I'm going to say is you do have a rotary encoder in your Elegoo starter kit. Unfortunately, it does not include a nice little knob. Uh, my, I just happen to have some extra encoders. Yes, I'm geeky that way where I have an extra encoders laying around the house. Um, and I had a knob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn this because this is, this is really difficult to turn. So I'm going to install this knob and make it a little easier to work with the switch so there we go so now i can press it and i can easily turn it so we'll be able to turn it and watch this turn now the other thing you will note is that i am working on a electronics pad which has a little resistance if you're working on a table and you're turning these things are going to be moving everywhere so you may want to find some sticky um, um, some kind of sticky surface or something with a little more resistance or it's going to move around or potentially put some weight on one end of this and that'll help it as you control it or you're gonna have to hold it this way okay hardware done we are done with the hardware so i think what we're going to do now is we're going well i not think i know what we're going to do now is we're going to take the hardware piece we're going to set that to the side and this is where the fun begins we are going to code this project and we are going to code and as I code I'll talk a little bit about each line I will tell you it is hard to just talk about every line as we go because uh, you can't really see the whole features and functions so what I've done is I have a gist a gist is a place where you can store code and in the gist file which is also in the show notes there are extensive comments talking about the code so I won't talk uh, in real detail I'll just kind of comment as I code again so you can fast forward even uh, but um, if you want more details very well documented code of my code not not the code that uh, was the original code but my code for this project is in a gist that I have linked in the website uh, blog post okay so let me go ahead and bring over our multi view multi cam view so here we have our hardware. This will be nice a little bit later because we can uh, kind of uh, from here, from our code, we can upload our code and then I can do all kinds of fun things so we can see it all at the same time. But for now, let me go ahead and shift over to my Arduino code here. And we are going to get started coding. So the first thing normally I would do is include some comments. We're going to forego the comments. Again, all the comments are included in my gist file for you to look at but we're going to get started typing and the first thing we need to do is we need to include a servo.h library 
This is important because by uh, default, there is not a library included to control the servo. You would have to hard code these. The servo library will, basically what it's doing is adding new commands to the Arduino so that, uh, to the Arduino IDE, which is what we're typing in, so that it's easier to control that servo. This would be much difficult, much more difficult without that. The other thing we're going to do is define SW to four. We're going to define, oops, there we go, mistake. Def I won't do that every time I mistype. That's just uh, for fun. Uh, but when we find code, we will do that three. And we're going to talk about these in a minute. Define VT2. Now, if you were paying attention and following along, you probably already know what those lines mean. This line right here, we're setting the S W, which if you remember, well, here, let me bring it here. If you remember the SW, DT and CLK are the same switches or the same connectors on the encoder. So we are telling uh, the Arduino that the SW is connected to pin four. That would be a good time to check to make sure that it is, and it is. The uh, DT or the determined direction kind of thing is connected to two and that the clock is connected to three. Remember that semicolon, that is very important. Now, it's important here, but it's not up here. It's not required here, but it is required here, which is very confusing, I know. Okay, those are our values. So here we're just setting up a counter. Here we are initializing an integer variable uh, called current click. Here we're uh, creating an inter integer variable called last click. Integer basically means it'll hold a number instead of alphanumeric characters. Uh, same thing here. Uh, here though, we're gonna be using this later to say that the LED is connected to pin 11. This is um, stating what is happening with the current value of this uh, variable. We'll come back to that. Now we talked about this variable last time. Uh, if you remember, this allows us to um, stop some issues that we had with our momentary switch um, by installing what's called kind of like a, a software pull-up resistor. Because if you don't have that, your momentary switch will be erratic and won't always work. Okay, now remember void setup only runs once. That will only run once. Okay, you got that? Now, let's do our void loop. Now, this is going to seem a little odd because what's happening here is I am creating a loop that will refer to functions that we have not created yet. And the first function is button press. Okay, so it's going to jump to a function called button press that includes more code, which we're going to code in just a minute. And what we're going to say is, if the current LED equals zero, and this is going to seem very counterintuitive, but if it is zero, then what we want to do is we want to turn on server control which is another function. These are functions. You can see the name and then open close uh, parentheses. So if that happens, then what we want to do, if I can get this, if this LED is on, and again, it's kind of reverse logic here, which you'll see how that operates. If it's on, then it'll allow us to control the server. So servo. Now, here's what I've done. I decided there was a couple of ways I could have done this. Basically, what I'm saying is, if the LED light is on in our circuit, then I can control the motor with the encoder. If the light is off, then I can turn that encoder all day long and that motor will not turn. So I'm using the light indicator to operate whether the encoder The thing we do now is going to come from these functions that I've created. And the great thing about this is for troubleshooting, if I have a problem in the button press area or the servo control area, I can jump to those functions and fix that. I don't have to go through looking through this big long line of code. I know exactly where that is and then I can narrow the scope down to where I'm looking for the bugs in the code, okay? So 
if you're new to this, that could be a little confusing, but as you see how the code works, hopefully that'll make more sense. So the very first thing we're going to do now is we are going to create this button press function right here. And we are going to do that by obviously uh, typing exactly the same thing. And then we're going to do this right here. Now, if I scroll down, you'll see it's already put in the brackets for me. So now everything I do in here is going to be looking to see if the button has been pressed. Okay, so the code is going to look like this. Okay, so we've created the button press function here. Uh, in a nutshell, basically what we're saying is, hey, if I press the button, then, um, or, or first before I do that, hey, look at to see if the button was pressed on the hardware, which is this piece right here. Remember, the SW is kind of the switch. Um, if it has, then what we want to do is we want to toggle the state of this particular um, variable here. So if it was true, it's now false. If it was false, it's now true, which triggers the LED either being on or off. Get that? So every time the button is pressed, it toggles the LED state. If it's on, I click it, it's off. If it's off, I click it, it's on. So this function does nothing but check to see if that button's been pressed and then hold that value state, whether it's on or off, in a variable that we can use to determine if we can move the rotary encoder uh, or use move the motor using the rotary encoder, okay? So there's a lot of code in there. Again, all the comments are included in the full gist if you wanna break each of those down. It does include this smart little delay in here to make sure that the hardware catches up with the software. If you don't have this, this will not work, much like our last project that we did, if you don't add that delay in there, you're gonna get all kinds of random weirdness, okay? So that is the button press. Let's say we go in now and we're going to program the server control function. So here we go. At this point, I want, to, I want to share something with you. Um, one of the things I'm doing is I have this uh, coaster and I'm just moving down. This is really helpful if you're typing code. Have something that you can slide down after each line and that will help you keep, kind of keep up where you're going. I noticed I was typing, I was starting to get confused because these variables all look a lot alike. So you gotta be very careful. So let me go ahead and get back down here. And I was on this one right here and let's start typing again, shall we? All right, so the code is in there for servo, void servo control. We're looking at our servo here, and uh, we have uh, basically what we're looking to do is, uh, again, as long as that LED is on, then we can use our servo control to, to rotate left and right, to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, and I'm not sure how that translated with this mirror camera here, but clockwise or counterclockwise. And then one of the interesting things is, uh, I want you to note in the code here, we have this, this area that says, if counter is a less than zero, then the counter is always zero. This um, program will actually allow the counter to go into negative numbers. Well, the encoder doesn't want negative numbers. It wants uh, zero or yeah, basically zero to 179. That gives you 180 degrees, right, to turn. So zero to 179, 180 degrees. You count the zero as a location. So if it's ever less than zero, if that counter is ever less than zero, negative one, then we just reset it to zero. That way, that encoder, if you just keep turning negative direction, it's always gonna be zero, and that, uh, that motor will always be in the zero location. Likewise, if we ever reach greater than 179 degrees, it will always be 179. So even if you just keep turning to the right or, or clockwise, it's not gonna try and move or send a signal uh, to that motor at all. It's just always gonna be there. So you will be, there will be a point when you get to the end that you can keep spinning and nothing's gonna happen. You have to actually get back and start negative spinning again to, to get back down to that area. So I just wanted to share that uh, because that's how this works. Now, here's always the fun part. We've got the code, we've typed it in. The next thing that we do in our Arduino IDE is we always compile it and we compile it with this button right here. Uh, you can compile and send, but I'm gonna verify. So I'm gonna hit verify 
And already, what I love about the IDE is we have, that's right, we have an error, and you can see that highlighted in red right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, that's easy, that's just a, a misspelling. So let's go ahead and respell counter, and we'll check it again. Actually, uh, let's go ahead and hit it again. Looks like we have an error here. Let's see what I have done here. Declared not in scope. Um, if generally that is, yep, there it is. It's generally a variable error. So there's that one because there is no current space click. So we will check it again. Uh, here's another one. I did it again. I really like spaces today. We've got to stamp out spaces. That's for sure. Oh, we can do it here too. There you go. There you go. Now you get the real feature there. So let me get rid of that space there. And again, always do this first. Always verify before you send it. It'll just save you a lot of time and error, and you can almost always figure it out. Okay, now this one, I think I know what happened. It expected an if. I believe for this specific if, and I, I second guess myself. I did not have it this way in the code, but I thought I remembered that I needed those. I do not need these brackets here because this is um, a little bit different situation for these and I've got this spelled out in the um, gist so uh, you can see let me go ahead and grab my code here and see what I have done uh, same thing here um, uh, counter is greater than 179 uh, counter is 70 it looks like counter oh I missed this right here you got to have that right there right okay so let's re-verify and looks like everything's good. So it looks like I could keep that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to put that back in there. Looks like I could do one or the other. And in this case, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to keep that because I think that is better. Coding. Uh, so let's compile it and make sure that still works. That is actually pretty good to only have about four or five issues. That not bad, folks, let me tell you. Uh, maybe it's the fact that I've done this a few times. All right. Now, we have our code. Now, what I'm going to do is to go back to here. Let's go ahead, and uh, I'm going to bring in my USB port. And hopefully, if everything's working, we're almost done with this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in here uh, the right way, not the wrong way. And then I'm going to – let me move this over here because it's a little – I've got the plug here. I'm going to plug this in. Now, when I do this – I have a program in here already that works, um, so uh, I could actually uh, go ahead and do this and you would see that it works, but uh, we're going to go ahead and re-upload our code and make sure that all of our hardware is set up. So let me go ahead and click this, and it looks like I have an issue. Okay, well, I think I figured it out. Um, I had oversaturated my uh, PC. So basically, I'm running Linux with elementary OS, and I have so many USB devices. What had happened was uh, they were conflicting with each other, so I wasn't able to upload. I now have that fixed, and uh, just to show you and hopefully prove it, and I've I, it was all working a minute ago, but now that I've loaded all of uh, OBS Studio again, which is my recording software, I'm not sure if I'll be able to upload again. I may have already just uh, dinged it up again because now all these cameras, but let's see if we can get it working. So let me go ahead and go back to my view. What I'm going to try and do now is, let me get my cursor over here, and uh, I am going to try, it has compiled. I went ahead and brought up my original code just to make sure there wasn't something in code. A lot of trial and error. I mean, I was doing a lot of this business, right? Yeah, I'm doing a lot of that. Um, but the code was all fine. I, I went line by line. Uh, but let's see if now with all these cameras, if I can upload it. And it worked. Okay, so just uh, a problem with the PC having so many different USB devices. So what I did to fix it was I just rebooted, unplugged the uh, Arduino, uh, waited a few seconds, rebooted the machine, logged back in, plugged it back in, made sure just that was working, which it was, and then loaded OBS Studio. So I am recording again. So there's a lot more than you wanted to know. But let's go back to our project, shall we? Because now it is working. And what I'm going to do is go back to my I think I want to go back to my workbench views. That way you'll get a much bigger view. And what you will notice is that 
We have all of our lights on our Arduino. Um, we should probably turn this off. Let's see what this looks like. Hey, Google, turn off Workbench. Okay, so now you can see the lights here. So it's dark enough you can see the lights. And uh, if I press the button, remember the encoder, if I press it, it is a switch, which is how we've wired it. And I should be able to press it and this light comes on if I can do it. And oh, I, I'm double clicking it. There we go. So there we go. The light is now on. So now I should be able, when I turn my knob, this should move. Let's see how this works. And it is moving. Remember, it's moving one degree at a time. One degree at a time. So it's very, very slow. And if I go the other direction, it'll start moving the other direction. So if you want to see more dramatic movement, what we can do, and hopefully my Arduino will continue to connect, we can go back to our code here. And I'm going to scroll down. And the movements are in the servo control function. Again, this is where functions really are great because now I can come in here and play with this. And uh, what you'll see is we have a server right here, which is the counter. The counter is always one degree. So zero to 179 gives us 180 degrees. So if I really wanna bump that up, I could say, let's multiply that by two. So now it would be uh, two degrees. And we're going to check, see if we can upload. Let's see what happens. Okay, so good, and we heard a little bit of a, 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 a blip as this went. So now if I move this encoder, uh, see my light is on, and it should move a little further now, and it is a little faster. So that is working, that's about two degrees. Let's bump that up significantly. So let's go back over here, and I am going to change that to, um, if we do 10 degrees, that means we'll have about, da, 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 da. so let's try, uh, let's let's do six. Six would probably be good. And then we will re-upload that. That should give us good movement. Now again, this reinitialized. And let me go ahead and turn my switch on. You see I click my switch, my light came on. This should move now more and faster. And you can see it really clicks along now. And we can click backwards. Now let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead and go back to our code. Let's make that 10. So now there will be 18 different clicks to get us all the way through. So we will upload that. I'm so glad I got this working again. All right, and we heard a lot of movement just then as it zoomed back in and home. We will press, our light is on, our motor is working, and this is gonna be pretty fast movement. And you can see it's really bouncing. Now you're going to start to really see some um, kind of iffy movement because as we do that, we have not accounted for that delay for the software to catch up to the hardware movement. Remember, the motor is going to move a lot slower than the software. So it may jerk around a little bit, uh, but by and large, you can kind of see how that works now. So pretty cool. Uh, hey, Google, turn on Workbench. So there you go. There is our project for the day. Now, uh, I really would like for you to give it a shot and see how it works for you. See if you can go through, program that. Um, I, again, would encourage you, please don't just copy and paste the code into the, um, into the IDE. Actually code it and go through the um, the bug fixing, you know, have some fun with it. Don't get frustrated with it. Have some fun with it. Uh, solve the problem. And again, what I really love is when you compile uh, using the IDE, you're going to see uh, errors in your typing immediately. But please try typing it in because at least if you're watching this for uh, the course I teach, you're going to have to troubleshoot and bug fix your own programs. If you're not typing it in, you're not going to understand what this code means. I have learned so much doing these videos because I've typed the, the code in over and over and over, and it starts to become a second language to you. That language becomes more natural to you and you understand it. We are using a, a subset or variant of the C programming language, so these are skills that you can actually translate elsewhere. So hopefully you are ready to go. You've got your Arduino, Elegoo Mega Kits ready to go. Some of you have the basic kits. If you do have the basic kit and don't have uh, the encoder, make sure that you purchase an extra encoder or ask someone if they have a spare laying around the house. 
but I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with this project and hopefully it will get your brain going for how you can control mechanical devices using your Elegoo Mega Starter Kit. So thanks for watching. Uh, remember, I've got other videos. Uh, subscribe below. Uh, use that button. That way you'll know when I post a new video. Um, and most likely my next video will be something Arduino related. And I'm looking at possibly doing one on using the LCD screens, these small LCD screens. Um, so that could be one that you might have of interest. So leave your comments below and look forward to hearing from you. And I will get to editing this because there are a lot of mistakes I need to take care of.